Sides, 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 sides. on the What up, y'all? It's Ed Love. It's time for another Come On, Son, the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, the podcast brought to you by CigarsInternational.com. Go there, get 10% off all of your purchase by entering the code ED10OFF. And it's almost holiday season, so you know it really is holiday season because Black Friday is coming up and we got Thanksgiving coming up and all that good stuff. And then Christmas is around the corner. So when you check out from CigarsInternational.com, type in ed 10 O-F-F, to get 10% off your entire purchase. And I have already been told that's going to go up the closer we get to Christmas. And locally here by Nissan South of Morrow, 6889 Jonesboro Road. You go there in Georgia, and of course, you can get certified pre-owned. You can get used, and you can get brand new cars. They take care of me, they take care of Moni, and they will take care of you. Moni Love, I'm talking about. Now, today's podcast, I had an opportunity to sit down and talk to a person that has been involved in the music business since they was about 13, 14 years old, coming from Boston, Massachusetts, and becoming a part of a fantastic group that we all know and love that has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. 40 million people watch their three-part series on BET, the new edition story. I'm talking about Mr. Ronald Boyd DeVoe. We're going to talk all about new edition, all about BBD, all about the highs and lows of the business, y'all. So sit back and relax and check out this podcast as Mr. Ronnie DeVoe from Bell Biv DeVoe and New Edition is our in-studio guest on the Come On, son! the podcast joining me in the studio is a brother who's been doing this god i'm gonna let him tell you man part of bell biv devoe yes new edition yes. my dude ronnie yes. devoe is in the bill the best the thing DeVoe on the twins. planet that's the best thing on the planet right there the devoe boys yeah i mean i feel whole in life right now there you baby, go you know so many things going on man but i'm just happy to be here amongst family man, man it's a blessing it's talking always to a family to you know the you, world bro. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. always a pleasure. Bro, I cannot believe that you are about to turn 50. I'm about to turn the big 5-0 on November 17th. Wow. The trilogy is real, man. Right. We're in New York, November 17th. Right. Then we shut it down in Atlanta right here, November 18th, this coming Saturday. Wow. And then we finish out in Los Angeles. Okay. On Sunday. Right. Bell Biv DeVoe and Friends. Oh, man. You just That's talked to 112 a right. second ago. Yeah, 112 was in, in the building, you know, before they was here. Yeah, they was here. And they here. were talking about you guys and the legacy right. that you guys set up, left for them all the time. Bro, when we saw the miniseries on BET right. about New Edition, mm-hmm. you weren't initially a part of the group mm-hmm. when they first started. Nope. 1978, the atmosphere in Boston, like, as a... 10, 11, 12, 13-year-old talent shows. For some reason, that's what it was about as a kid. Right. Right? So I'm doing my thing with my uncle and Cathedral Projects, not knowing about them, but there's this meeting spot, the hi-hat, right down Dudley Station area of Boston, Roxbury. Uh Uh-huh. People gather from all around the city. So New Edition, Orchard Park, they in that same atmosphere, right? Mm -hmm. 1978. Boom, they reach out to my uncle. I'm trying to do my thing with him and the groups that they talk about, the Untouchables and the Transitions, you mm-hmm. know, who was groups that we looked up to at, um, at the time on top of Michael Jackson, people like that. Right. But that's the atmosphere, and they're setting their whole thing up. So 1980 comes around two years later after they win, after they win the Hollywood Talent Night. Okay. I know about New Edition at this point. Unk comes back and is like, yo, you want to be in this group? And he, I'm like, hell yeah, what do I need to do? I'm 12, 13 at the time, you know what I'm saying? And uh, he teaches me, um, I don't remember the Jackson 5 record. Now, I wish for I did. everybody that's listening and don't know, when he says yeah. Unk, he's talking Brooke Payne. That's right. All right, his uncle that did all the choreography for these Everything. guys. Everything. Like, he gave career. us our swagger. Like, not even the, he's not just the choreographer of right. our group. Like, when you think about grooming, you know, um, an artist, your artist development, like, right. that was Brooke Payne, like, from A to Z. Right. So, anyway, he teaches me the room, uh, routine to a Jackson joint, and I wish I could remember which one it was, <laughs> but 
I go to Bob's house the next day, right? And Bob's in the project. He's, he has the big family. He has two separate apartments that they open up a wall, so it's joined in, right? <laughs> so I'm on the youngster's side, you right. know, in front of the coffee table. Boom, I, I jump in line and perform the song with him. And from that day on, I was in, man, you know? So they right. was two years in the game building before I jumped in. But before Candy Girl came out, of course, three years later, I put that work in with my guys. You know? <laughs> what yeah. was the initial reaction to you from the rest of the guys? Um, it was almost like, um, it was almost automatic, right? It was like it wasn't even a conversation. Right. I didn't really have any, like, uh, friction or beef or just like a wall. Like, with I don't remember that with any one of the guys, you know, from day one. I think... I probably gravitated a little bit more towards Ralph and kind of Ricky initially. Uh -huh. I remember staying the night, you know, over the, at their spots a couple times. Right. So probably went that direction, and then it kind of made its way back around to Mike and Bob. But the crazy thing was Cats in the Hood, Cats in the Projects, like Brian Baker, a couple other cats, they was the haters, you know, and uh -huh. uh, <laughs> B was like a bully. He was like, you know, F that nigga. Like, he, right. he, got, he got light hair. He got red hair, yo. Like, get him <laughs> out of here. Yeah. He don't even look like y'all. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it was from cats like that, you know? Because, you know, after a while, a couple, two or three weeks, a couple months in the game, you know, New Edition is known again in Boston. Right. You know, some of the ladies in OP are like, you know, at 12 and 13, they're like, ooh, Ronnie, you know, he light-skinned or whatever, right? <laughs> so I'm getting hatred from some of the cats in OP. And, uh, but yeah, man, it's a beautiful thing. Like, no animosity from either one of them um, from day one. Right? How do you think being from Boston molded you guys into the men that you are today? Um, it just because allowed, beside the Wahlbergs, y'all the biggest thing to ever come out of Boston, yeah, bro. Yeah, I think it allowed Boston like just growing up in a place that you're not supposed to make it out of. You know, like in the trenches as a youngster, um, molded and shaped us into being um relatable to other people across the country and across the world. Ultimately, you know, people such as yourself, like when they saw us it wasn't like a fabrication like we was you know we grew up on the other side of the tracks and people couldn't identify with us like the struggle and just the way we you know wore our hair or wore our clothes or what have you man I think Boston kind of put that fire and that hunger in us like to take it up a notch like mm -hmm. yo we're not supposed to make it out of these desperate situations drug and Drugs are just coming in, you know, early 80s, late 70s, and all of the above. Like, aunts and uncles are, you know, getting strung out on stuff like that. So to be able to navigate those kind of waters, we had to put on kind of warrior armor as youngsters. And I think Boston pre prepared us for life in general. Right. You know? yeah. Early early New Edition, you guys have smashed records. I mean, big records. Candy Girl jumps off. It's a hit. Right. Straight out yeah. the gate. Y'all yeah. y'all dudes is killing it. You you touring, you are doing all kind of stuff, but you come home to no dough. Yeah. No How did dough. that affect you, Ron? Um, the crazy part for me, Ed, is um Did you know why you weren't exactly? Paid? I wasn't, you know, I wasn't even on that side of the game. Like, okay, so 83, 84, we start making this money, right? Right. We get dropped back off in the projects at this time. Um 15, you know, 16 years old. Like, I'm pulling on my mother's coattail before that for a dollar or five dollars, you right. know. At this point, I'm getting per diem, which is $35 a day, you know, sometimes 50, depending on, you know, we got to that point, right? So now I'm getting that money. On top of that, I'm getting a thousand, two thousand, five thousand here or there, not knowing that much more money is being made. But come on, yo, I'm not, I'm. I'm coming from a dollar to five dollars, so I'm not so looking at it like, yo, what grand. the hell is going on? Right. Right. So it wasn't until, honestly, other cats in the group, our parents, you know, my mom, uh, Miss Brown, all of the parents, are honestly. And then you look at Mike and Bob, you know, for the most part, who kind of had more of a business mentality initially, who start digging into who started digging into certain things. So it wasn't until later on when my eyes were opened by parents and some of the cats in the group that I felt like, okay, let me pay more attention. But mm -hmm. at that time, 
I'm like, yo, I can buy pizza, I can buy candy, I can buy the latest joints, I can buy the moped. Right. All you wanted was the moped at 15, 16 years old, you right. know, in, in, in the hood. So, yeah, you know. Not realizing that we're selling Boy, millions we of records it. and, and, yeah, and they giving something, it to else, us. And something else should be happening. And they giving it to us on the backside. And what's crazy is, okay, when we go from Streetwise, from Candy Girl into um, the Cool It Now LP with M- MCA, right? We signed documentation that certain a certain amount of our money was supposed to go to a trust fund, right? Okay, and this is court ordered, right? right. This is court ordered, like because we're minors, right? Do you think any of that money went to the trust fund? Like we probably could sue like the the courts or what have you, uh-huh. you know? Like when you when you really think about it, because mm-hmm. that was. On paper, that's real black and white, right? Right. So, yeah, yeah, like, that's wild. So, I mean, it went from the top down. Like, okay, there's money to be made as far as entertainment and these kids are concerned. It's going everywhere, you know, and it's kind of filtering into our pockets a little something. Right. But that was the journey of us really starting to break it open and really gain control of our business. When did y'all really start making money? Like, serious money? Uh... You started what, 83? Boom, I'm going to tell you this, right? So, Alan Heyman, right, at the time, Budweiser Superfest. Right. You know, people like the Commodores, Patti LaBelle, like who the who's who the what's what, you know, at um, the stadium, right, uh-huh. outside the Rose Bowl, um, DC, RFK at uh-huh. the time, right? So, this was maybe 87, something like that, right? So he's doing these Budweiser Superfest. We're opening the joints at first, you know, starting in 85, right? And okay. then, boom, we watching people like Rick James and SOS Band wow. come on after us, who, the who's who, right? And we get to the point where now, you know, we headlining the joints, right? So Allen put up a show in D.C. that he we didn't have no paperwork on, you know? And honestly, the show was 100K, you know, back then. And we was like, man... We didn't sign on to that, yo. Like you, you know. So we, uh, needless to say, we got a nice percentage on top of that hundred k. Okay, you know, to come and rock, and that was the first time that I got paid all cash in my pocket. Oh, you know, wow. so when you think at the time, a hundred plus k broken down by five cats, no management percentage, all that. You know, Stro was in the game. Right, my uncle. You know, Brooke Payne. When you think of that, like, that was the first time I was able to see 20, 25K in my pocket like that. Wow. 87. Wow. You know, and then it just, you know, opened up the the home, the um, not the Heartbreak Tour. Right. Um, HK Management, Howard Kaufman, cast that was up at MCA, Big wig, Wigs. We're managed by them now, you know, and okay. we start really getting into the backside of, of of money, so okay, your guarantee is one hundred twenty five a night, or what, or what have you, and you're making eighty twenty on top of that eighty going to you after expenses from the promoter and all it and all of the above. So that was right. like right around that time was the first time that how, we really how, started. How getting painful it. was it for you to vote Bobby out of the group? Because I know Bob was your guy. Yeah, yeah, he was man. It it was tough. It was tough. You you look at one side of the fence where you knew. As a group, we all conformed to a certain extent. Like, okay, when we're supposed to be back and tight, we're back and tight. When you're up doing lead, then you're handling business, but you got a certain time that you're supposed to be back. And Bob was just that cat that broke the rules. Like, (laughs) I'm pushing the envelope. Right. In hindsight, I learned a lot from that, you know. Mm. But at the time, you know, as kids, you're like, yo, why are you bucking the system, you know? <laughs> so on one side, you have this management, this new management that comes in, and they like, yo, if you don't do this, then, you know, you may lose everything that you built up until this point, and you're back in the projects trying to figure it out from that point. So it's like, man, as, as 16, 17 almost year olds, you're like, man, I mean, what do we do as yeah, as a sixteen year old? Like, right. man, I'm starting to already pay my mom's bills now. Right, it's falling. The resp- responsibility is on me now. You know, and you know, cat is bucking the system. He won't conform even when we sit down and say, "Yo, Bob, come on, at least just reeling in a little, so we don't have right problems on this side of the fence." And yeah, it was it was tough, man. Everybody cried, you wow. know, ultimately, but it was good. 
you know, because look at what happened. Right. That look at what Bob, happened for him. Yeah, Bobby Brown came out of New Edition and allowed for Bell Biv DeVoe to feel good about the fact that the, the apple don't fall too far from the Whose tree. Whose idea was Bell Biv DeVoe? Do we got time? I got to take a break. All right, yeah. whose idea was Bell Biv DeVoe? Bell we'll chop Biv it up later. Fuck yeah. it. Let's keep going. Bell Biv DeVoe, that's Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis. Really? They yeah. came to y'all and said y'all should be Bell Biv DeVoe. The whole home again run is done. You know, Johnny Gill already was solo, you know, and of right. course he was um, had an obligation to do another solo album at okay. some point, so that was the time where he was going to jump into it. Of course, at that time, Ralph's feeling like, look, Bob is killing it, you know, like, man, this could have been me, t- you know, because they wanted me first to jump out, you know, right. uh, jump out the car. So he's like, yo, I got to go. So at the time, we sitting at a little end of the tour party, you know, out in L.A., and it's like, damn, you know, what are we going to do? And we just felt like, well, I guess we'll, you know, kind of wait. And, you know, for the next year and let them do their thing, and when they wrap back around, we'll pick New Edition back up again. We didn't even think further than that, you know, until Jimmy kind of specifically and Terry were like, yo, man, why don't y'all just, you know, why don't y'all do something together? And, man, immediately we just looked at each other like, I mean, right, you know, why don't we do something together? Right. And from there, it was just a whole different mentality. Lil Silas, rest his soul, um, he wanted us to go new edition. Like, yo, you know, y'all need to put it on and just tighten up, but just be three instead of five, right? Right. And we was like, nah, I mean, at that time, you know, we in L.A. wilding out, you know, uh, just getting ready to turn 21 or just turn 21. We in the clubs, like, it's bananas, you know, it's probably weed and, and, well, probably it's weed all around the place. Yeah, all the time. So just our mentality, it's like, okay, off stage, um, off stage persona of New Edition, let's just jump into that. Well, I mean, we're in L.A. with... With bomber jackets and like big boots on, right. and cats in LA, like, what are y'all giving me? You know? <laughs> but that was the mentality at the time. So we just said, look, like, we gotta go here because we love listening to hip hop at the time and RB as well, but hip hop was ours, like, as at that age range. You know right. what I'm saying? So, yeah, Bell Biv DeVoe, man. Jimmy who, and Terry. Who said Bell Biv DeVoe? Because it, it just rings. It does. So You know what I mean? It, it rings Bell, better than DeVoe Bell Biv or, it was, it or, or was, Biv DeVoe right, Bell. Who Bell, said Bell Biv DeVoe? It was Biv supposed DeVoe. to be Bell Bivens and DeVoe, right? And we was like, yo, that sounds like Ray Goodman and Brown or, <laughs> or an attorney <laughs> firm. Be a you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, right, or a law firm or something right. like that, right? So who was that? Was it Lou? It might have been Lou Silas, as a matter of fact. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, um, exec, exec up at MCA. Yeah, I know Lil um, very well. Yeah, God you know, rest under his soul Gerald too. Busby, Great exactly, guy. Exactly, man. Great people. Um, but yeah, so he came with the situation, and Mike, you know, he just felt like, nah, man. You know, people always spell my name wrong. Number one, you know, they put the e, uh, B I V E N S instead of right. the I, which is what Mike's <laughs> right. joint is. So he's like, yo, just cut it off and let's just do Biv. You know, take the N off Bell Biv DeVoe. And it was like, yeah, okay, that sounds a little bit more edgy, you know, fun, kind of hip, um, as opposed to, you know, Ray Goodman and Brown. Right, you know, Bell Bivens. Lawyer, and lawyer, DeVoe. and lawyer, right. you know. So Lil Silas came with it, man. Was, was there any apprehension from, you guys were on MCA, was there any yeah. apprehension from MCA to do a Bell Biv DeVoe project? Nah, we all had um, these... Um, joints in our contract called uh, leaving or leading man clause or leaving man clause, basically the same thing. Right. To where if you jumped outside of the group, they had the first option to be able to. Right. First know, right to refuse. Exactly. Type of all thing. that. Right. So Ralph, you know, exercised his, of course, and we jumped into ours. Um, And at the time, I'm trying to think, you know, just budget-wise, you know, for our record or what have you. It might have been maybe, you know, in somewhere between 250 and 500, you uh-huh. know, initially. You know, you had to have that money back in the day because <laughs> it cost you 1500 a night, That's you know, right. or for an eight-hour block for That's studio right. time. You ain't lying. You know, at the time. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, they just exercised that clause. It wasn't like they were saying, yo, uh-uh, we're not going to do it. They just looked at it like, okay, we have this entity that's, 
Here, I'm sure if we throw something at the wall, it's gonna do something. So, right. Who, yeah, they, who bought you Spider Man and Freeze? That was uh, that was Hiram Hicks. Love Hiram. Hiram Hicks. Yeah. Shout out to Hiram. Shout out to Hiram. Yeah, man. Like, um, I remember I was over Rouse House, um, in L.A. And Hiram hit me, yo, where you at? I got a couple joints I want to play you. I'm over Rizzes, come come on through. So he, you know, pulls up. I jump in the car, as a matter of fact, to listen to the joints. Um, Ralph is inside at that at, at that point. So Poison, he plays me. Poison, I want to say he played me maybe the beat to um, She's Dope, right? Right. Um, maybe another record. Um, but he, when he hit me with them snares, Ed, initially, I'm like, yo, like right out the gates, I felt like it's, man, at the time, he wasn't our manager, you know, but he was kind of just trying to figure out his way up through our whole system. Hyman right. came on. He was taking pictures of us in Philly at first. Right. And he worked his way into, you know, prominence in the music industry. Hell but yeah. Anyway, so at the time, he wasn't our manager, so I'm like, yo, Hiram, I honestly... You know, if you lock this one down for us, you got my vote hands down for management and and damn near everything out. I was, I was willing to, you know what I'm saying, right. get that dude. But anyway, yeah, he played me that joint and right out the gates, was I felt like it's a on smash. It? Was the, the point? The cool, yeah, the cool G rap joint, everything was in there. It oh, just wow. didn't have the rhymes. Right. The melody was in there. Freeze was on the um the 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 vocal at the time. Oh wow. It was right. The swells, everything was in there. Right. You know, that that infectious B section leading up to the chorus. It right. was all it was all there. We probably tweaked a couple little words, you know, once we finalized it, but other than that, it was written. Me and Mike just put the rhymes on top of it and Rick put his swag on there and it right. was just crazy from there. Can you believe I remember that? Ralph too, and Ralph, Ralph, he was like, "Yo," because I went inside, you know, with a, a cassette tape of it or something. He gave me a little joint, right? And maybe he actually sat in the car. I'm just trying to remember it, but I, you know, we went inside and started talking about it. And he's Riz was like, "Yo, I gotta be on that joint." <laughs> <laughs> he was like, he's already working on his. So I'm probably listening to five or six of his joints. Right. We we probably had maybe two or three records at the time. So we're playing each other, you know, right. the stuff that we're working on. But at the time, we had the Timmy Gatlin, Wokey Stewart joints, which is Smile Again, I Do Need You. Oh, my Maybe a gosh. couple other Smile joints, again. right? Smile Again, oh. Yeah, 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 crazy. Jesus Christ. So I love Lou for that side of it, because that's where we started. Like, right. the more any kind of that. Right. We had two other songs, too, that were mid-tempo, up-tempo, that was like... But at that point... We hadn't had that joint that, that kind of take us in that direction that we really wanted to go to make us feel like there's something different. You right. Know? And Riz was like, yo, I got to get on it. So <laughs> I'm like, nah, man, come on, son. This is, you know, this is going to be the jump off for BBD. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so you knew it from the first time. That, uh, had Mike and them heard it already? Or you no, it I heard him? it first. And then I guess Hiram got it to them somehow. And right. I'm, I, I remember calling them like, yo, this joint, we got to get on it. Right. And initially, Mike and Rick, they'll tell you they were more like thought, um, songs like Thought It Was Me. And, um, Another great song. That's yeah, a great yeah. Let me song. know something, which was a sleeper on that record, right. produced by um Hank Shockley, Keith uh, Shockley, Eric Sadler, uh, the whole Bomb Squad. But they didn't really hear Poison like I did. I'm like, yo, come on, this is the one we got to do. Like if, right. at any point in our career, you know, if I hadn't really spoke up, it was that point. You know, is when Ron was like, yo, come on, I got to put my foot down because. Up until then, I'm kind of falling back, just letting the leaders take lead, right. you know? And yeah, you know, I, I had to take the lead on that poison. On that job. one, man. Yeah. And thank God you took the lead on that because it's it, it must be, like, incredible to know that you have a record that no matter when, yeah. where, yeah. it drops, no matter what generation, we live. that song rings we, off, though. We live to this day. Yeah. You know, I mean, looks that... Cats that are hot now don't get we're getting because of that record, you know. Right. I mean, lip sync battle, um, um, drop the mic, um, right. all of these different shows. Um, the the finale of one of the the boy band that first season of the boy band show, you right. know, like I mean, these are ABC pop affiliated like big looks, NBC, CBS, Fox, whatever. 
These are big looks that Bell Biv DeVoe is getting because of that monster, man. Like, 26, you know, 27 years later. Wow. Crazy, right? That's amazing, man. And it we is, still looked apart, you know? We it still is looked apart. So how that man, helps. How do, how do that all helps. of these years later after New Edition, mm-hmm. how the hell are y'all still so tight on stage? Y'all are right. amazing. You never, yeah, thanks, I've man. seen you probably 100 times, mm-hmm. and you guys never cease to amaze me. How the hell are y'all still that tight? You know what it is? It's it's what's embedded. Like, you know how you, you never forget to ride a bike, really? Right. Like, when you go through so much initially before you even get your jump off 1983 with Candy Girl, it's we putting in work, man, from, from the time I joined the group. And before that, I'm still putting in work outside of New Edition. Right. But from 80 to 83, you know, Three, four, five, you know, five hours a day, five, six days a week, you know, rehearsing, like you said, making sure that, you know, the fingers are locked and, right. you know, the precision is right. The shap is a shap and it's not a shop, you know, like right. the shap, you're like, wow, that's a move that we call it. And you've seen it a hundred times. But anyway, just the work that we put in, man, kind of just that that allowed for us to really feel like. I mean, uh, just it's just in there. You know, that whole riding the bike is just in there. And, you know, we jump in periodically. It's crazy because, man, I want to put my guys in a headlock right now because we don't jump in as much as we used to, you know, sometimes. But it's so embedded in us that when you look at the state of the industry and how much people put into their performance, it's still, you know, kind of leaps and bounds above oh, some of the stuff that people are bringing. Absolutely. Like, it's crazy. There, ain't, there, right. there are not a lot of groups out that there are, that I could actually nah, say they're not. They're can, not. can touch New right. Edition. I've seen y'all y'all were here, and y'all did the Funk Fest, and Babyface gave a great show right. that yeah. day. Took his shirt off, ran in the yeah, audience and everything. But I'm once, like, baby, I thought he was going to do some. I'm like, yo, stage, do y'all... some push-ups before <laughs> you take your shirt off, Face, Come on. Still, yeah. when y'all hit the stage, it, it was like it's like to a different level altogether. Like, right. just everything that you guys do on the stage is just so precise and on point. Yeah. Everything is always on point. Were you happy? With the job BET did on your on the miniseries oh, on New Edition, yeah, yeah. The, the good thing about it was, was it I mean, accurate? Yeah, yes, yes. The good thing about it, Ed, is we were a part of it from day one. You know, from the time Jesse Collins came to us, on top of other people, as a matter of fact, but him more specifically. This was. 05 or what have you, you know, uh-huh. the year MJ passed the BET situation, you know. He was trying to pull New Edition together for a performance, and he saw, like, yo, this is bananas trying to get these six dudes together, right? <laughs> this is a movie in and, in and of itself, so I can right. imagine what the real movie is like up until this point. So from the time, you know, he kind of came with the whole, um, you know, idea that it can really be done, we have been a part of it, like sitting in meetings, pitch meetings, and various things. Sitting in script meetings with um, Ab- Abdul Williams, who's the writer for the joint. Like uh-huh. every step of the way, like who's the director? Okay, Chris Robinson, come on, let's sit down and make sure we understand from you that you are not only a fan of New Edition, which he was, but you really get our vision and how we want this to come off, man. We don't want it to be fluffy because it's not a fluffy story at right. all. Like, certain things we just had to make sure we had our eyes on every step of the way. And once we said yes to everybody in their specific area, man, they hit home runs with it from BET to Zola as far as the the casting is concerned. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Robbie Reed, I mean. Yeah. I mean, just everybody in their position – just hit a home run on yeah, it. Like, in Chris's absolutely. vision and my uncle, you know, Brooke Payne, because he was right there. I think he missed one day of filming because of something that was important. But between him and Chris Robinson and Jesse Collins, like, having their eyes on the situation, man, masterful. Yeah. Masterful. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, masterful. and and it, and come on, like, almost 40 million viewers. It's That's just, a lot of people I'm a little salty BET. right now, man. Cause Why? The Emmys, man. You know, the Emmys. Come on, the new edition story as an independent made for television because they have a slot where it's television movies. You right. know, that if, come on, man. Didn't like, it broke records, yo. It Come on, how you not 
if even if we didn't win, you know, how you we not had get to, nominated? Right, we had to for consideration, up for consideration. I'm a little salty, but it is what it is. I don't blame you for that, man. When people talk talk to you, just random fans and and people that don't know the whole story, what part of the new edition story do they say they're shocked by the most? I think Ricky's yeah. Ricky's joint. Yeah, yeah that's shocked. Yeah, people didn't know. Yo, dog, know. that shocked me yeah. to tears. Yeah, people didn't know. Did not you know. know. How did they you handle know. that part of it? Because you guys were tight. Yes. I mean, you just kind of see, you know, your brother. How did y'all keep that so quiet? Bobby's was all over the place. Right. We always knew about Bob. That's because, right, Bob wants his joint to be all <laughs> over the place. From the time he got arrested... In '88, whenever that was on the Heartbreak tour, yeah, he and he got the he saw himself on the news that night. Bob felt like, yo, okay, this is it, right? <laughs> but anyway, uh, Rick, I mean, we was always kind of we was bred to keep our dirty laundry, you know, in mm-hmm. the closet. You know, you know, we come from that cloth. Like the the social media age, that wasn't us. Like, right. uh, we're not putting all our business out in the streets like that. So that was one of the reasons why we were able to really keep Rick's thing confined because he felt like I'm not airing my dirty laundry, like not even with my guys until it gets to the point where we were like, man, like, you know, Rick, your, you know, your vibe is, you know, like you can kind of see his vibe just changing. like Right. So it was tough, man, like, you know, him coming to us and saying, yo, fellas, like ultimately after we kind of seen some hints, this is what I'm dealing with, and I, I need y'all support. I need y'all's help. It's, you know, that's that that's that bear hug that's like no other, man. Like you said, shock you to tears. Right. You, know, you already know what that room was like. Yeah, um, I can imagine. For us, um, I can count on probably one hand, you know, the number of times that I've cried, you know, really as a man. You know, right. my dad dying, my my grandmother dying. You know the birth of my kids. The you know twins, ha! Ah. Yeah, that that um, you know that situation with Slick was one of them joints that made you feel like, man, you know, your brother could potentially be going in a direction where he's no longer here anymore. You know, because right. you hear the stories, but man, it's so good that he was able to turn a uh, turn it around, man. And the uh, glory goes to God for that because that's what his center was. Yeah, and you know, we just wrapped around that. Yeah. You know, ultimately, and did what we had to do, and he he's handling his business now. Come on, come on. Have you heard Rick? You know, in concert. Yes, sir. Come on, man. You you know, I mean, that dude sounds better than he did in <laughs> 1990. Yeah. You know, so he got through his demons, and and it feels good that he's on the other side of yeah, it. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. 2016, you guys released your first track in 15 years as Velvet. Right, that's crazy, huh? 15 years. Why does that happen? Because y'all constantly work. That's why it happened. <laughs> Y'all are constantly That's working. Why it There's happened. always a new addition. Uh, then the Bell Biv, the Vogue, then the Three Kings. <laughs> and then something goes on. And right. then somebody. Y'all right. are always doing something, right. man. Yeah, six of y'all get Ralph, back right. together, go out on tour. Right. Okay, Johnny went and did LSG. Up. Like, yeah. we had so many different variations of things that touch this new addition organization. Right. Without y'all, there's no boys to men. Boy, there's so much has come through this joint, man. Like, Phil Robinson. Right. You know, Hiram Hicks, like you said, like um, Fatima. Right. Um, you know, she came to, she was actually auditioned to be uh, one of our dancers as Bell Biv DeVoe. Right. Right. So, like, there's so many people that we kind of blessed that kind of came up through our joint and just, you know, it's like when the, my mom said, be blessed and be a blessing, right? Uh huh. And man, New Edition is blessed, and we are such a blessing to so many other people, man, including our those any for lifers out there. One love, absolutely, from your man, Big Fifty. I need to see all of y'all, you know, in New York, Atlanta, and L.A. All three spots, man. You know, what, at least what, one what, of them. When, when it's all said and done, what do you want people? No, I got. I'm not even gonna get to that question yet because I got a few more questions for you. Right. Favorite New Edition video ever. Um, that was a that was a nice one, Joseph Kahn. For some reason, I see if it isn't love. I see can you stand the rain? Right. I see can you stand the rain? For some reason, is is kind of jumping out ahead. But then I also see Candy Girl. Okay. You know? Boy, that's tough. That's Favorite tough. song to perform live? Poison. Poison. 
is ridiculous. <laughs> like, even in the New Edition show, that's, you know. Favorite, besides, all right, the BBD. That's your favorite BBD song. But New Edition? New Edition. Mr. Telephone Man, for some reason. Really? And I don't even have a part on the song. <laughs> I don't have very many parts on them New Edition joints anyway, but my parts are sweet. What about Ronnie? Yeah, she's bad. <laughs> she's bad. I know right. she's bad. <laughs> but, um, yeah, Mr. Telephone Man, it's just such a sing-along for some reason. Like, when right. we get that, 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 that Ray Parker Jr. joint comes in, and, you know, that cross step starts for some reason. It's just a fun joint. And when we get to the crowd participation... They're just singing to the top of their lungs. Okay, you know? so we know we know Poison is your favorite BBD song. Favorite Ralph Tresvan solo song? Um, I would say Do What I Gotta Do. Okay. Do What I Gotta Do, man. That joint is crazy. I love the emotion in that. Favorite Bobby Brown solo song? Dang. Um, I'd have to say it's something about Roni. Okay. Yeah, something about Roni. The sing along, the oh man, something about Roni. Yeah. Have you guys ever talked about retiring? Ever said we gonna do new edition two, three more years, and then we gonna hang. You know, out. honestly, um, just keeping it keeping it funky. Like the retirement question has come up recently. You know, uh huh. And you know, it it felt like at times, you know, it was hard to do. New Edition because of the personalities and the challenges with everybody's individual success and scheduling and all of the above. But it never felt like retirement. You know, it felt like, damn, why can't we just get our act together? You know, <laughs> hopefully it's going to happen at some point. Okay, boom, it's happening again. Right. But recently, for some reason, man, just because, I mean, you have this movie, you have this star on the Walk of Fame, you have the... Yeah, we didn't even talk about that. Congratulations Thank on that, Thank you, too, man. Bro. Thank you. Like, you have all of these different things and this newfound audience from the movie. I'm saying, hey, we got at Bell Biv DeVoe shows, which we've been doing all year long, only because, for some reason, we're not doing new edition shows, right? Right. Three and four, five kids, you know, initially. You know, now we got, you know, now we got, I mean, you know, hundreds of kids in our audience from five and six and ten year, years old coming to see BBD because of that new edition story. Wow. You know, because their moms kind of grew them up to it. Right. They heard it in the, in the background. But now with the movie, they, they're attached to it now, you know. And how do we not give them an E, man? Like, what is going on? So right. it makes you feel like, okay, well, maybe really with all of this hoopla and rah-rah and just being put on this pe pedestal, how do we not just hit the home run now? So it makes you feel like, man, well, maybe... Could you could you see No Edition doing, like, a Vegas? I can see all of that because it's been brought to us, a, you know, a number of times over the last, let's say, Vegas, I would say over the last five years. A residency. You know, residency. Boys and Men did it. I don't know yes. why No Edition can't Over do the it. last five years, we've talked to just about every hotel or, or organization, Caesars, you know, right. different win um, organization about a new edition residency. But wow. It's, there's a dynamic in any. Uh, Keith said it in the movie, right? Damn. Um, he said, we're, we're great together, but we just can't get it together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember that, was that a line. That profound statement. Right. We're great together, but sometimes we just can't get it together, yo. So, and man, you still love the hell out of each other, though. Yeah, yeah, you do. We was on, we were on the phone a couple nights ago. We we got our second show of the year, which I can't even really say what it is, but the first show, which was going to be the only show of 2017 for New Edition, was Steve Harvey Soul in the Sand in the Bahamas, right? Right. And for some reason, that's because maybe that was booked, you know, a while back. But we got another one on Thursday, low key, you know, for a great friend of ours, um, and we're rocking just a quick little set, right? Um, but man, I, you know, I want to do that. I I thought I was gonna be on stage with New Edition, you know, for my birthday. Like when I talk to the powers that be, which is all of us, <laughs> I'm like, yo, just make sure on November seventeenth, man, we're in either Atlanta. Boston, New York, Miami, or L.A. As far as the routing is concerned, right? Right. But man, you know, for some reason, 
it's, you know, it is what it is. But at some point, we're going to get it together and get on this road because everywhere I go, people are like, when are y'all coming to town? Like, what's what's going on? So I, I can't wait for that. Yeah, man. and yeah, any faithfuls, we always show man, up. Man. And we yeah. always, we always there. We right. always, man, we always love to see y'all, man. When we saw you in the movie go and become, start doing real estate. Right. Was that the lowest point for you? To the have to lowest, do that? Um, it was, right? It was, but just like Bob getting kicked out of the group, right? Uh-huh. And Gerald Busby saying to him when he had to go to Boston, look, you know, either you're going to get your shit together or you're probably going to be here in Boston and die because you'll get into something ridiculous with your mentality at this time. Right. Um, that wasn't my mentality, but it was, you know, similar. You know, it's like, yo, what are you going to be known for outside of any? Let's say brothers can't get it together, you right. know. Where does that leave or, Ronnie? Or even BBD, because even at the time, 99, you know, before I, 99, 2000, before I moved to Atlanta, no BBD, no new edition. You know, Mike is doing his thing. You know, Boys the Men and Biv Ten and, right. you know, um, Biv Entertainment. You know, myself and Rick are like, yo, you know, okay, what's it going to be? And, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, right there, you know, bankruptcy, you know, for myself. Oh, wow. Um, losing a home. Honestly, and this is the first time I've really said anything about that. Foreclosure, wow. you know. Um, it's like, okay, you know, what are you going to be known for? And I always had a love for architecture. You know, uh -huh. I went to school in the suburbs, right? So I knew I'm from the hood, but I went to school <laughs> starting in fourth grade in Newton, uh, in Newton, Massachusetts suburbs. So I knew, you know, both sides of the game. But architecture. So I kind of started gravitating back to, well, this little bit of money that I do have, maybe I can get into some investments, you know, on right. the, on the home side or what have you. So moved to Atlanta, long story short, just to kind of, I felt like L.A. was a glass ceiling for me at the time. Like I, I got to get some new, fresh energy, something different. Atlanta's the black mecca. Right. You know, a lot of us doing well here. So let me come here, and I ran into a real estate agent. Uh, showing me homes in the West End, okay. investment properties, little right. four-unit joints or what have you. And she told me that it would only cost me, you know, maybe a thousand dollars and a month's worth of time to have the access that she has to all of these homes that are on the market. So now I can look up my own homes to invest in or what have you. Right. So I'm like, huh? And at the time, I'm thinking, damn, I do it. I go go to college. You know, is that is that the route? Do I become a lawyer? Am right. I doing the Swiss Beats joint? You know, because right. congratulations to him for getting ready to. Um, Graduate from Harvard, right. you know, which is three years an incredible accomplishment. But I'm thinking the same way. And I'm like, wow, only a month and a half and I can have this access and start eventually start a company of my own mm. like Remax or Century 21 where I can have agents and blow this thing up. And it just took off from there, man. And that that low point allowed me to stand on my own outside of any. And that was honestly becoming my meat and potatoes and NE was the gravy before 08 when everything just came crashing down. So from 2002 when I got licensed all the way to building my company in 2006, leaving Remax uh -huh. to like before the real estate bubble, man, I it was about to be bananas. And now, <laughs> you know, now we kicking and screaming, you know, coming back up again, man. I, right. You know, it was crazy. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, is, that, is, that is a beautiful thing. When yeah. it's all said and done, what yeah. do you want people to remember most about New Edition? Um, new Edition. About what stamp you guys yeah. put on the music? Yeah, I think, um, I think that part about um, being blessed to be a blessing to others. Through New Edition, we were able to lift up, excuse me, not only ourselves, from Boston, the projects, a place that you're not supposed to make it out of as a young black male, right? Mm -hmm. But we pulled our families out, you know, and sh and bought homes for them and 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 showed them the world in in many different instances, right? And even the people that we blessed that work for our organization again that went on to prominence, like just in the money that we generated, um, 
and the money that we gave to others, you know, along the way to make sure they're being blessed from turkey giveaways to bikes and backpacks or whatever that may be right. along the way is that new addition was blessed to be a blessing to others. And now we stand, you know, really sitting next to the conversation, you know, when you think about groups, you know, of all time. You got to say no addition. I mean, and he is in there despite some of our shortcomings. You right. know, we still sit yeah. right where we felt like we wanted to ultimately, you know, to be mentioned with the likes of, you know, the Jacksons and the Temptations and even the Beatles and the Rolling Stones, right. you know. Okay, on the pop side, Beatles and Rolling Stones, but you know, yeah, okay, new addition. You know, it may, they they might not beat out the Beatles, but I know who they are. Yeah, absolutely. You know, but on our side of the fence, man, hands down, you gotta have a conversation like LeBron and Jordan, or you absolutely. know, what I'm saying, absolutely, there's no doubt about yeah. it. Absolutely, yeah. happy fiftieth birthday, Mr. Ronald. Appreciate DeVoe. you, players, going down right here in the A Revel nightclub. Uh, shouts out to my people's um, Tory. And Yvette, um, my 40th was at Sweet Lounge, right. you know, and my wife's 35th. I've done so many things with them. Those are my people, right? And uh, we were supposed to do a baby shower at Revel, right? But my wife was put on bed rest. Okay. You know, she was in the hospital. A lot of people don't know this. 76 days. Oh, right? wow. 43 days before um, our kids were born, right? So she is a soldier. Yes, she right? is. But we were supposed to do our um, baby shower there, you know, and when I thought about, okay, I'm not going to be on stage with no addition, like, damn, I got to scramble now for my 50th, right? <laughs> like, yo, I want to do something big. So I reached out to them, and uh, they blessed, you know, they blessed me with the situation over there, right in West Midtown off of Ellsworth Industrial, I want to say. Come out Saturday night, man, Belbiv DeVoe and friends. We're going to be rocking a little small special set. Um, and and our friends are going to be in the house, too. So you never know who may show up on stage go. and it's bless the mic crazy. as well. So, yeah, man, I, man. And those any for life is BBD for life is I just love y'all, man. Everybody that's spoke life into me and, you know, just lifted me up through prayer or, yo, what's up, man? Like, I love y'all, what have you, man. I just come celebrate with your boy. And you either go. three places, because I know this is across the world. <laughs> New York City, November 17th, Friday night, Atlanta, GA, November 18th, Saturday night. And then Los Angeles to shut down Sunday night, November 19th. Ronnie DeVoe in the building with me. It's the Ed Lover Show with Moni Love. This Ed Lover podcast is being done in conjunction with Cigars International. Make sure you check out CigarsInternational.com for all your cigar needs. This episode of Come On, Son, the podcast is produced and engineered by co-executive producers Kimana Paulus and Krista Hayes. Recorded at Mean Street Studios in downtown Atlanta, Georgia, this is an official Loudspeakers Network podcast. Network podcast. Network podcast. Network podcast. Network podcast. Network podcast. Network podcast.